get right to the breaking news. The weather emergency across much of the West, a conveyor belt of storms fueled by El Nino. Cars completely submerged in water in some places. One driver snapping this image, looking out the passenger's window in Santa Barbara. The streets look like rivers. And inside this restaurant in L.A., listen as the water comes through. Customers simply terrified by what they were seeing. ABC's Matt Gutman leads our team coverage from California tonight. The rain public California tonight. This freeway underwater, the deluge stranding cars, this truck pushing one under a bridge. Strong storms snapping power lines and downing trees, pitting cars. And snarling traffic, nearly two dozen weather-related crashes reported. Those El Nino storms delivering so much volume. Breaking through the walls of that LA restaurant. In Old Town San Diego, the water pouring through the ceilings. Storm drains turned into geysers and roadways into rivers. I felt my car slightly lift off and I just felt all the water and then I was like, I can't, I can't move. The third straight day of blinding El Nino rain slamming the state. The soil and drain systems simply unable to absorb all of it. Mud melting off the hills onto major highways. The flooding so dangerous in Petaluma, California, this truck flipped over, trapping a woman inside her car. Rescuers diving into the murk to free her. And in Castilla, California, another dramatic rescue with two women trapped inside their van as water rushes over them. This dog getting carried to safety by five firefighters. In this record fire season, thousands of California homes threatened. For decades, mud like this wasn't a problem here. Then a fire tore through these mountains. Now when it rains, it's like water coming off of concrete, threatening homes like this with a deluge of thousands of tons of this thick mud. Resident Ed Heidlein has fortified his house, but fears the worst. And you've been here watching that mud come down the We're, mountain. How fast does it go? It, they've clocked it at 60 miles an hour. That's according to the... Here. That's according to fire, L.A. County fire. We're going to turn now to the extreme weather in the West. Three storms now, all fueled by El Nino in one week and another storm about to hit. Tonight, the picture is already a stairwell turned into a river in an apartment complex in L.A., a rock slide in Yosemite, and then the rain punching through this ceiling at a Goodwill in Escondido, California. What a mess. ABC's Matt Gutman from California tonight. Tonight, those storms generating monstrous waves. Flapping at these homes in Malibu. Heavy seas gobbling up this street near San Diego. That rock slide closing a Yosemite highway. All of it whipped up by three consecutive El Nino storms in as many days. But tonight, the biggest concern, more mudslides. When a hillside like this collapses, it forms this kind of mud, which isn't really soupy, but has more the consistency of concrete. Anything it touches gets encased in it. The only way to clean this up is with heavy machinery. In the mountains, the snow blinding. From near Flagstaff, Arizona to California. More snow in the one storm than we got all last season. Knocking out power in the ski town of Big Bear. David, when we showed you the LA River here yesterday, it was about three feet over my head, but the drought here persists. All that rain over the past week, enough to last Los Angeles just six days. David. We turn now to the economy and the breaking headline from Wall Street late today. Stocks in a free fall today, the worst start to a year in history. The Dow closing down nearly 400 points on the tumultuous day for China's markets. For the second time this week, China forced to halt trading, fueling real concern around the globe and right here at home tonight. ABC's Lindsay Janice at the Stock Exchange for us. Tonight, a wicked drop on Wall Street. The worst start to a new year on record for both the Dow and the S&P. The sell-off sparked by concern over the slowing Chinese economy. Stock markets there plunging far and fast, triggering the government to shut down all trading twice this week. But the measure causing buyers and sellers to panic. Markets in Asia, Europe, and now the U.S. following suit. When something happens uh, as significant as it is in China, it is going to have significant effects in Europe and the United States. Also concerning investors, oil prices near their lowest in 12 years. Some asking, is it a further sign of a weakening global economy? 
We turn now to what's being called the nation's biggest environmental disaster since the 2010 BP oil spill. A runaway natural gas leak above Los Angeles has emitted more than 150 million pounds of methane since late October. Thousands of residents in the community of Porter Ranch have been evacuated. Two schools have been closed and more than 2,000 families forced into temporary housing. The leak is coming from a natural gas storage facility owned by the Southern California Gas Company, or SoCal Gas. The exact cause is unknown, but it's believed that well casing was breached deep below the ground. Adding to the confusion, the methane is invisible to the eye, so residents can't see the fumes, causing them headaches and nosebleeds. The leak is so severe, it'll account for one quarter of all California's methane emissions in just one month. SoCal Gas says it could take three to four months to stop it. This is a breaking news alert. North Korea has officially announced that it has successfully conducted an underground test of a hydrogen bomb at 10 a.m. local time. Japan declared the nuclear test totally intolerable, and has pledged firm response while South Korea has amplified their military readiness and surveillance against North Korea. Initially, a man-made earthquake struck near a known nuclear test facility in North Korea and the world held its collective breath. Now every news agency across the globe is reporting North Korea's claims that it has conducted a successful hydrogen bomb test. Just hours before the explanation, screens on seismological centers worldwide, including in South Korea, lit up with alarms of the 5.1 earthquake. During his New Year's address Kim Jong-un declared North Korea, a hotbed of nuclear war, and blamed the United States, aggressive strategy, and large-scale military exercises aimed at a nuclear war, as creating a critical situation that could escalate into an allowed war. First wave knocked out all the power. security is relentless in their drive to keep the planet on lockdown under their control and they'll mess with anyone who gets in their way right now homeland is messing with states and the states are messing back and guess who's caught in the middle the story starts back in 2005 when congress passed the real id act in the act is a requirement for all states to comply with a set of federal standards when they give out driver's licenses the 9-11 Commission recommended these standards as a necessary tool to reduce identity theft and fraud and to increase security. But privacy advocates in many states aren't having it. They say that the new standards put too much burden on individuals to provide more stringent proof of identity. And worse, they say the new standards pose a privacy concern, as they will allow people's information to be easily shared in a national database. In other words, the federal standards to get a driver's license included in the 2005 Real ID Act will make it harder for Americans to travel as well as easier for the government to track them. So right now, Homeland is setting a schedule for all airports to only accept driver's licenses that meet their trackable requirements. If your state doesn't issue those trackable licenses, you'll have to get a passport, a $150 passport that makes you easier to track just to fly within your own country. U.S. President Barack Obama has taken unilateral action on gun control, introducing new restrictions on gun sales without seeking approval from Congress. Gun sellers will now be required to have a license and will have to report lost or stolen weapons. Also, background checks will now be tougher to ensure that customers are mentally stable. Washington will increase the number of staff conducting these checks by up to 50%. It's also earmarked $500 million to boost access to mental health care. He's going to do everything he can to undermine the right of American citizens to bear arms as guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. Now, he's smart enough to do it incrementally, 
as opposed to all at once. And I see what the president is doing as another incremental effort to undermine the ability of law-abiding American citizens to be able to defend themselves from criminal and terrorist conduct. Now, in the greatest, most technologically advanced nation on earth, there is no reason for this. set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint. Why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Well, as the gun control debate continues in Washington, a Georgia company has what it says is the answer to make guns safer without putting any restrictions on the owner. 41 NBC's Kyle Warnke reports on this state-of-the-art technology that could be the wave of the future. It's a story you'll see only on 41. The technology of the gun has been around for hundreds of years, designed for a very specific purpose. But a new technology might be changing the old way of how we use the weapons without compromising their integrity or safety. Meet the guys behind Safe Gun Technology, a group who has designed a fingerprint scanner to go on your gun so you decide who fires your weapon. German-based company Armatix has recently announced its smart gun system capable of determining whether it is being held by its owner could hit the market within 45 days. And because of a 2003 law, New Jersey could be the first state in the nation to adopt smart gun technology requiring all firearms to be smart guns. The state's biometric gun law, signed by former Governor James McGreevy, requires all guns sold in the state to be equipped with biometric technology that allows only their owners to fire them. But the law has remained unenforceable because until now, no such guns have existed. Regardless of the staggering numbers, so far gun rights advocates have vehemently rejected the sale of any kind of smart gun in the U.S. In fact, Engage Armament, a gun shop here in Maryland, was supposed to become the first seller to offer the specialized gun. But after severe bullying and even death threats, the owner decided to pull the gun from the shelf. Analysts say that outrage stems out of fear over a controversial New Jersey gun law. In 2002, the state passed a trigger law mandating that all handguns be personalized within three years of a smart gun going on sale anywhere in the U.S. Many gun owners are against any legislative mandates on what kind of gun has to be purchased, and they worry that the New Jersey law could one day be adopted across the country. Now I'll introduce the RFID tag. Trigger Smart uses similar wireless technology like what's in electronic toll readers to unlock its guns. And now the gun is ready to fire. The chip can be worn in the form of a ring on your finger or a bracelet. Now they're starting to embed chips in humans there in the fatty part of the handle. It is referred to as the Gadget Super Bowl, some yeah. people might actually call it, uh, because every year the best of the tech world goes head to head, showing off all of the new and exciting things consumers can hope will change their lives. It's possible. Uh, this year's Consumer Electronics Show is currently underway in Las Vegas, and here with a breakdown of the most buzzed about items is ABC's tech contributor, Tina Trin. Hey guys. Welcome. Hi. We're Good so morning. happy to have you. Thanks for having me. We've been seeing some previews, so really. What's the coolest thing you've seen yeah. so far? Well, the biggest news right now is that Oculus Rift is finally here. The virtual reality headset you can finally order. Okay, so I have a couple questions about it. What is virtual reality? What is it and how much is it? What is this? Yeah, virtual reality is kind of hard to explain if you haven't experienced it before, but it's basically being immersed in a virtual world, whether it's a video game world or the real world, and being able to experience it really in depth, feel like you're really there on the ground. So something I know Candace and I are both really interested mm -hmm. though is this wearable tech, especially yeah. the fitness yeah. technology that's available out there. Yeah, we saw a lot of fitness trackers, a lot of smart watches so far, and there's more of the same, but now the difference is that you're gonna see a lot more integrated smart wearables that are part of like clothing items that it's you wear every bra, day. right? There's smart bras. Yeah. Samsung came out with the smart belt. This will <laughs> unfortunately report your waist size to you every day. No! So if you're watching your weight and trying to get better about being on track, uh, staying fit, this belt that you can wear with like a regular pair yeah. of jeans will actually track how many steps you've taken 